Hello everyone and welcome to the first individual anime villainous how-to video. I, as always, am Chaos in the Sky, and for this video I'm going to be walking you through how to play as Merrick Ishtar from Yu-Gi-Oh! in Anime Villainous. Merrick Ishtar is arguably one of the most iconic villains in all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise, playing the pivotal role of the main antagonist for one of the most beloved Yu-Gi-Oh! arcs, the Battle City Tournament. Growing up as the next in line for a lineage of Tomb Keepers, Merrick was treated harshly by his father and wished to be free of safeguarding the Pharaoh's secrets. This led to him developing a darker second personality, willing to do whatever he saw necessary to be free of the Pharaoh. To this end, Merrick sought to take the three Egyptian god cards and use their power to become the Pharaoh himself, while getting revenge on the very Pharaoh that caused his life such strife. As you can probably imagine, given Merrick's goals in the anime, his objective in Anime Villainous is very similar. While playing as Merrick, you'll be looking to gather the three Egyptian god cards and attach them all to Merrick. Once he has all three Egyptian god cards attached to him, Merrick will then enter Showdown to try and claim victory. To start off with, let's take a look at Merrick's villain ability and villain strength. As you can see here, Merrick's strength is one of my personal favorite numbers, the question mark. Much like one of my other favorite numbers, the letter X, you'll have to do some math to figure out what the question mark's strength is equal to. Thankfully, this is a very easy equation, as Merrick's villain ability is that his strength is equal to the amount of items he has attached to him. The Egyptian god cards are items in this game, so for each Egyptian god that Merrick collects, the more strength he'll have. So let's go over how exactly you'll be gathering the Egyptian god cards, as that is the crux of Merrick's gameplay. Funnily enough, in Anime Villainous, the Egyptian god cards aren't cards at all. There are tiles that start to the side of your territory. Each Egyptian god card has the same wording on it, to attach the Egyptian god card to Merrick once you defeat the hero that the god card is attached to. There are three specific heroes in Merrick's Fate deck that can attach the god cards to themselves. Those being Yugimoto, Seto Kaiba, and Merrick's own sister, Ashizu Ishtar. When any of these three cards are played to Merrick's territory, the person playing them has the option to attach the respective god tile to that hero. Slifer goes to Yugi, Obelisk goes to Kaiba, and Ra goes to Ashizu. Each of these heroes also has their own unique abilities to add more trouble to Merrick's goals, making them a major pain to deal with. Of course, your opponents aren't going to help you towards your objective, which means Merrick has to be capable of playing these heroes himself. Because of that, Merrick has three cards available in his villain deck to help him play cards from his fate deck. Those cards are Innocent Facade, Rare Hunter, and of course, the Trap card. Innocent Facade will be your best option, an effect card that lets you reveal two cards from the top of your fate deck and then play one of them. Rare Hunter is an ally that will only reveal the top card of your fate deck, but then stay in your territory to help with vanquishing. Trap card, meanwhile, is a scheme with a cost of zero, making it easy to place on an opponent so you can play from your fate deck on their turn rather than your own. Now, do remember that the fate deck has 15 cards in it, which means it may not be easy to find the exact three you're looking for. That could lead to drawing a lot of other fate cards in the meantime. Luckily for Merrick, his fate deck is full of cards that are double-edged swords. They can hurt when an opponent plays them, but if played by Merrick, he can use them to his advantage. The effect cards in Merrick's fate deck are all either helpful or harmful depending on who plays them. Anti-rule is very straightforward. It either has Merrick gain or lose two power. Then we have Tomb Keeper's Destiny, which causes Merrick's hand to be revealed. The person that played Tomb Keeper's Destiny then discards two cards from Merrick's hand and puts one from his discard pile back into his hand. If played by your opponent, they can get rid of your most useful cards, but if played by Merrick himself, it can be a good way to ditch cards you don't currently need and get back your more important ones. Lastly is Tournament Bracket, which will play a hero from Merrick's Fate discard pile to his location. This is a good way to play one of the god card holders if they're in your discard pile, either because you had to defeat them when your opponent played them earlier, or your opponent discarded them during a fate action. Keep in mind that Merrick's challenge, Heart of the Cards, serves no benefit to Merrick whatsoever. It makes it where the opponent gets to reveal an additional card from Merrick's fate deck when fating him, giving his opponents more options and thus making it harder for Merrick to play the fate cards that he wants to. Also in Merrick's Fate deck are several heroes with various effects. There's Taya, who is of no real help to Merrick, as her ability just lets an opponent play a hero from Merrick's discard pile when she's defeated. Even if this forces your opponent to play a god card holder, they're unlikely to attach the god card you need to them. Mai and Joey both have niche effects that could be helpful if played by Merrick, but may prove unwise as it means he'll then have to deal with said heroes. 
Mai allows the person playing her to rearrange the top three cards of Merrick's Fate deck in whatever order they like. This could help Merrick in setting up the opportunity to play the Fate card he wants, or making sure his opponent's next Fate doesn't hurt him so much. Joey, meanwhile, reveals the top card of Merrick's Fate deck when played, and if it's either an effect or Merrick's challenge, he can then play it. Again, Merrick's challenge does not help Merrick in the slightest, so playing it would be a waste. But if Joey flips up an effect that Merrick sorely needs, like Tournament Bracket, it may be worth it to Merrick to play him for the sake of getting that effect card. The last hero in the Fate deck is Bakora, who when played by Merrick actually becomes an ally at the bottom of his territory. Bakora has three strength, making him one of Merrick's strongest allies, very useful when trying to vanquish a god card holder. The most important thing about Bakora, however, is his ability. Whether he's an ally or a hero, if he's in Merrick's territory, it means Merrick cannot use his Millennium items. Which is what we'll be talking about next. Merrick has two Millennium items in his villain deck, his iconic Millennium Rod, as well as the Millennium Ring that he took from Bakora. These two items attach to Merrick himself, which means that they count towards his villain ability and increase his strength by one. These two Millennium items plus the God cards means that Merrick can go from zero all the way up to five strength. They also have their own unique abilities to help further Merrick's goals, hence why they're so expensive at a cost of three and four power. The Millennium Ring is very straightforward. Once per turn, you can choose a hero in your Fate discard pile and shuffle them into your Fate deck. Very useful for when the God card holders are in your discard pile and you want them back in the Fate deck. The Millennium Rod is a bit more complex, but one of Merrick's strongest tools. Once per turn, if there are no heroes turned into allies in Merrick's territory, the Millennium Rod can be used to turn a hero into an ally. The cost to do this is equal to the strength of the hero, so the stronger the hero you're making into an ally, the more expensive it is. Very important to note is that using the Millennium Rod does not count as defeating the hero. This means if you use the Millennium Rod on a God Card holder when they have the God Card attached, you will not be able to attach that God Card to Merrick. The text on the God Cards makes it very clear that the hero must be defeated, which the Millennium Rod does not do. Still, you can use the Millennium Rod to take control of other heroes, or use it to take control of a God Card holder and keep them as an ally for a while until you can get rid of them in a Vanquish or with some other card effect. Maybe when you're in a good position to replay them quickly and attach a god card to them. Another important card in Merrick's deck relating to Millennium Items is Bakura's Deal. To play this card, you have to discard one of your Millennium Items from your territory, but it lets you immediately defeat a hero. This does count as defeating, so it would let you take a god card from a god card holder. However, this method won't work against Ashizu and Yugi, but it is a good option to defeat Kaiba. The reason why is because of those extra abilities we mentioned earlier. Ashizu's ability prevents Merrick from discarding allies or items from his territory using his effects. Since Bakura's deal involves discarding an item, Merrick can't use it when Ashizu is in play. Yugi, meanwhile, cannot be targeted by Millennium Rod or defeated by effects, so the only way to deal with him at any time is by vanquishing or clashing. Since Yugi is 5 strength though, the odds of Merrick being able to clash with him are almost zero, since he'd need all the god cards and the millennium items attached. Kaiba's ability is that he gives all allies at his location minus 1 strength. This makes it very difficult to vanquish Kaiba using your allies, but it makes him a prime target for Bakura's deal. Kaiba did always hate that mystical Egyptian artifact nonsense after all. Now, there's one major aspect of Merrick's gameplay that we haven't touched on yet that you may have been wondering about. Your goal is to defeat Yugi, Kaiba, and Ashizu after having played them and attaching the respective god cards. But once you defeat a hero, they get discarded, and then your opponent can just play them again to take back the god card from you, resetting all of your progress. How does Merrick get around this? With one of his most pivotal cards, the Shadow Game. Shadow Game is an item that you can attach to heroes in your territory. When a hero with Shadow Game attached is defeated, they don't get discarded. Instead, they're moved to the bottom of your territory and turned into an item. Notice that they become an item, not an ally. This means you can't use them for vanquish actions, and it affects other cards like the Millennium Rod. This way, your opponent can't replay the God Card holders and keep taking the God Cards away from you again. There are three copies of Shadow Game in Merrick's deck, one for each God Card holder. However, you can attach them to other heroes if you want to keep them out of the discard pile instead. Shadow Game is also the only way for Merrick to get rid of his challenge. You'll notice the overcome for Heart of the Cards is to discard an item with a strength of four or more, which items typically do not have strength. 
However, if you use Shadow Game on Yugi, Kaiba, or Joey, they all have four or more strength, meaning you can then discard them to get rid of Heart of the Cards. To really make use of Shadow Game, you'll need some better allies than your default rare hunter. Merrick has several such ally cards with unique abilities and higher strength values. He has Umber and Loomis, cheap allies with two strength that become stronger if they're both in play. He also has Bandit Keith, who allows Merrick to perform a Vanquish using Bandit Keith before he moves at the start of his turn. Arcana is a three strength ally that allows you to add Shadow Game from your deck or discard pile to your hand when he's discarded from Merrick's territory, whether that's by a card effect or by being used in a Vanquish action. Strings has three strength as well and lets you perform an action at whatever location he's played to, as long as it isn't Merrick's location. Merrick's strongest ally is his stepbrother, Odeon, with a strength of four. When Odeon is played, Merrick gets to add Millennium Rod to his hand, giving him one of his strongest cards, provided he has the power to then play it. Merrick also has several other cards to assist him in playing the god card holders and defeating them. He has Cruel Puppeteer, a scheme that lets him put an effect or item of his choosing from his deck or discard pile into his hand. There's False God Card, an item he can attach to allies to give them more strength to vanquish with, at the potential cost of more power. His effect card Disposable Pawns lets him discard an ally from his territory, like your low strength rare hunter cards, to play any other ally in his discard pile, provided you then pay that ally's cost. You can even use this to play the ally that you just discarded, if you just want it to replay a rare hunter to use its effect again. He also has Sadistic Glee, which lets Merrick sacrifice a hero he's turned into either an item or an ally to gain a significant boost in power. And with that, we've covered everything that you need to know to play as Merrick Ishtar. You can now duel your way to claiming all three god cards and finally put the Pharaoh in his place, getting Merrick his vengeance at last. If you have any questions relating to Merrick, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer you. Also check out the description for the playlist to see all the other Anime Villainous How To videos that are coming up, if there's some other character you want to learn about. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you again for more Anime Villainous videos in the future. Until then, farewell.